Welcome back. It is Friday, March 31st, and the MLB, our three favorite picks are on the way. I'm Austin, joined by Logan, and yesterday, Logan, we had a great opening day. Let's recap it, though. It was a two-on-one day. Logan, your pick, props to you. A little Pirates and Reds over eight and a half. We will take that. Mr. Eduardo Rodriguez gets us five strikeouts. We only needed four, but he got us five. Only pain is that that nerfy nation, we did not get it through. Either way, we're bouncing back today. We got another Nerf one first inning. You guys all showed up a ton to the live stream. We appreciate you guys. Now, today we do have an offer on Bet365. If you sign up using our link down below at the top of the description, you can get $200 worth in bonus bets. All you got to do is bet $1 on the money line of any NBA, MLB, or even NHL team, and you'll get those $200 worth of free bets. Take all the, Check out all the details down below in the description. But either way, Logan, I'm throwing it to you. What's your first pick of the day? Yeah, so, you know, we're going to have a good winning day today. And we're going to the late game in this one. We have a really small slate, so not a ton of games to choose from. But I'm taking the Mariners run line in the first five innings. First half innings minus a half. So go to your book. This is just the first half inning uh, bet. It might be first half, might be first five. However your book uh, displays it. But the best odds right now are minus 108 odds on FanDuel. And in this one, you got two starting pitchers. Why do Austin and I sometimes like taking first five bets? Well, because you have Robbie Ray versus Hunter Gaddis, and that's who you get to limit it down. When you take a first five inning bet, you you neglect the bullpens most of the time, unless one of these starting pitchers gets rocked, and then the bullpens come in, and this bet's a, maybe, maybe a winner, maybe a loser. But I don't want to overthink this starting pitcher matchup, right? Later and on in the season, line reading Logan might take Guardians plus a half because this one does look a little fishy with the odds. But in 2022, Robbie Ray pitched well versus Cleveland with zero earned runs allowed in both starts. I think Robbie Ray is more than capable of falling exactly what Luis Castillo did yesterday with shutting out, you know, the Guardians. The Guardians were shut out yesterday with only, they were 0 for 1 with runners in scoring position. Now, you can look at that one way. You can say that's a statistical anomaly, or you can say they're just not getting on base a lot. And Robbie Ray's a hard pitcher to get on base. You know, if you're not hitting home runs against him, you're probably most likely striking out Robbie Ray. 3.02 ERA and a 1.02 whip at home in 2022. He's one of those pitchers, you know, when he's pitching at home, he's very comfortable. He's usually not putting on a lot of free base runners. I hope in the pitch clock era, Robbie Ray is still able to work efficiently, you know, up there on the mound, grunting as always. That's it's what he does. Cleveland also only hit 239 versus left-handed pitchers in, in 2022, which is not all that great of the stats. There's several of those hitters on that Cleveland lineup. That, that are left-handed hitters. And, you know, Robbie Ray is going to have the lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup. So I, I do really like uh, what Robbie Ray should be able to do versus Cleveland. Now, on the other side, we've got Hunter Gaddis, right? 18.41 ERA and a 2.45 whip in two starts in his rookie season if you're looking at that yeah i mean that that era is super inflated from from limited starts but i'm still he did not pitch well in, in limited opportunities it took a while for the mariners bats to wake up yesterday but seattle unlike cleveland they were one for nine runners in scoring position yesterday so their the run opportunities were there they just didn't really convert until late i expect there to be lots of run opportunities early in this one against hunter gaddis Maybe, maybe they, they've got, you know, runners on, you know, second and third, two outs, and they just need that clutch hit. I expect a hot start against this young pitcher today for the Mariners, and that's why I'm going to take them a half in the first five innings. So if they are tied through five, we do lose this bet, unfortunately, but they have to be leading by one or more through five innings, and I expect them to be able to do that today. But Austin, what do you got for us? Logan, what's better than one first five bet? I say two, and that's what's mine going to be. But look, I want to give out some player props, but there was this was a short slate. We only had five or six games on, and there really wasn't one that stuck out. However, there is one that I will talk about for one of these pitchers that I did consider. Now, I'm going to go to the Dodgers, and I'm taking them minus 0 0.5 in the first five innings or first half. Like Logan said, some books have this listed differently. Some books like FanDuel have it as first half, and then you got, I think, drafting is at first five. All that matters is after five innings, the Dodgers are winning by at least one run today, but hopefully more. Hopefully they make this a no-sweat bet. That's minus 120 on bet MG. I'm just throwing a unit on it. Well, let's talk about this as the Dodgers once again going to face the Diamondbacks. Dodgers are at home here. And yesterday we saw, obviously, these two teams played. It was Gallon versus Urias. Dodgers led 5-2 to two after five innings. Hey, do that again, and we're all happy. Now, you can take the first five money line. The first five money line is going to be much more juice than the run line. Why? Because if they tie after five, you'll get your money back for that uh, run line or for the Dodgers money line, whereas you would not if it was the run line like we're taking today. Now, let's talk about today, though. Merrill Kelly on the mound for the Diamondbacks versus Dustin May. Now, let's talk about Merrill Kelly, who 
Really didn't throw a lot in spring training. He was playing with Team USA in the World Baseball Classic, but only seven innings pitched in spring training. He had a 1.429 whip. There's something that you look at. Last year, Kelly liked to walk guys, averaged nearly three walks per nine innings. And this is a Dodgers team that's perfectly capable, sitting the bat on their shoulders, saying, fine, Merrill Kelly, if you don't want to throw strikes, we won't swing at him. And we've seen the, the Dodgers have Kelly's number. In his last seven starts, all of these since like 2021, he's recorded a loss in all seven of them. Now, while he could record a loss, maybe gives up the, you know, a couple extra runs in the sixth inning, I don't see him getting that far. And we've seen in these last seven starts, a 7.46 ERA, giving up three earned runs in all of those starts. Now, one of the player props I talked about that I liked was over four and a half hits allowed. The only problem is, I don't know how far Kelly gets into this game. And that's fine with me. If he's getting rocked and he's out of here in the first or second inning, it's probably a sign of that we're probably going to have a good chance of hitting this. But even if he goes, you know, four or five innings, I still think there's going to be a little bit of rust there. If you look at the batters versus Muncie, I'll put them all up on the screen. You see Muncie has over a 400 batting average. You see Will Smith, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman. All these guys are going to be in the lineup today. And this is the meat of this team. I mean, these are guys that are getting on base, guys that have high on base percentages, all versus Kelly, all seen him 20 plus plate appearances. So I think they can get up some runs on on him and at whether it could only be one run and maybe it's one to zero after five that's all that matters now let's talk with the dodgers who are going to start dustin may now if you've never watched dustin may he's got some cool hair you got to give him that but he's a very solid pitcher although he does have some ups and down starts last time he started against the diamondbacks last year it was a bad start for him but i think he bounces back here and in spring training was all right he had four appearances totaled 18 and one thirds innings pitch allowed six earned runs he had 20 strikeouts he has to put away pitches if he's on his game to get out of tough jams and that's what you want to see out of a guy like dustin may and look in spring training his last start in the spring training wasn't a good one five and two thirds innings pitch gave up five hits did give up a home run and that was where all three of his earned runs came ended up giving up four runs one of them unearned but i think hopefully he bounces back after that game the diamondbacks haven't really seen may too much in fact only 17 plate appearances the most on the team would be christian walker as big four they only have one extra base hit in those 17 plate appearances so if you're seeing a guy like may maybe limits this d-backs team to just singles making them have to get multiple hits in a row maybe steal some bases to manufacture runs i think the dodgers offense can live up the hype on the other side obviously trey turner's not there but this is still a very talented dodgers offense one eight to two yesterday we know they can put up runs and they can put up runs in bunches so give me the dodgers in the first half i know i probably won't bet on the dodgers a whole lot this year but they're one of the best teams in the league i think they come out here strong again win the first five at least and of course we're just taking dodgers minus 0.5 in the first five innings but logan you know what time it is play the music it's nerfy nation time grab out the flags these babies need to be flying today we appreciate everyone that was out on the live stream. We'll probably do another live stream today, so stay tuned for that as we sweat out the nerfy. But Logan, we're going back to what we're going back to the tradition where I start first, then you go second. Because last year, last year we did that all year long. We messed up the rotation yesterday. Let's dive into this one though. We're going to the Mets and Marlins game, taking the no-run first inning. Currently minus 130 on FanDuel. Now some people are a little bit confused, weren't sure what a nerfy was. Nerfy is you just take the no run in the first inning. We need six quick outs. Now, a lot of books have that at the under 0.5 runs. You can take that. Now, you can take the tie. Personally, the tie obviously is more ways to hit than a nerfy does. But I don't think it's worth paying the juice. You, it's obviously up to you. So you guys can take whatever you want. I didn't check the tie value, but I'd imagine the tie is about minus 150 today. Now, if you took the, the nerfy yesterday in this game, it cashed. Now, unfortunately, Logan, we don't have Sandy Alcantara. We don't have Max Scherzer on the mound today, but we have two solid pitchers that I can trust. Now, Jesus Lazardo, zero first inning runs allowed versus the Mets and two starts versus him last year. Now, the Mets are a team that is good at first inning runs, eighth in first inning runs in 2022, but Lazardo, a strikeout specialist. Like, unlike Michaelis yesterday, who could not find the strike zone and just giving up runs, and that's how we, we just had a bad pick on the Nerfy yesterday. Like, I think a guy like Lozardo, if he gets into a jam, he has to put away pitches. Michaelis could not miss bats yesterday. I think Lozardo can. I think he come out here, kind of confuse this Mets lineup through the first kind of one or two at-bats, and maybe they kind of find his, you know, groove on them in their third at-bat. But I think Lozardo can get us those first three outs. Who's pitch on the other side? Yeah, for the Mets, we've got Peterson going, right? Peterson will face the Marlins top half of the order. Now, if you look at how he fared versus the Marlins in 2022, yeah, he he, he got he got your feet uh, uh, several times, but... Good news for us is that actually this Marlins team's a little bit different this year than it is last year. I don't know what what his problem was through the first time uh, through the order, but he's gonna face Luis Arise, Gene Segura, and, and Cooper most likely, right? Now Arise, if you look at his batting splits versus left-handed pitchers, which this will be a lefty on lefty matchup, they're not as good obviously versus uh, lefties that he is righties. So that's that's an advantage for us. And even if Luis Arise does reach, which he's really good at, at reaching. He's not normally a, a steel guy, right? 
What's what could really ruin these these uh, no run first innings with the new changes in baseball is guys getting on base and stealing and getting into scoring position. And I, I really don't see that. You know, Gene Segura is is good, and if he gets on base, he's a steal threat. But I think Peterson will be able to navigate through this Marlins lineup. Look, Miami last year, 29th in first inning runs in 2022. They they were such a slow starting team. You know, where, wherever they were, they were just. <laughs> getting shut out a lot of times through five innings. A little bit different team this year, but I think Peterson is solid enough just to get us those three outs we need. Over under set to eight, right in the range we like to pick these no-run first innings. And as as you mentioned, Austin, these are two pitchers that hopefully can be able to miss the bats. But yesterday, Miles Michaelis simply wasn't missing. No, not at all. But we really like this one. Hopefully we get some six quick outs if we can fly these flags. Yesterday, I imagine a lot of people were on the under in that game with Sandy and Serge on the mound. It went over. I wouldn't be surprised if this one goes under today. So give us the no run first inning. Let's get six quick outs. Let's wave the flags. Let's bounce back after the brutal loss that we took yesterday. But those are our three favorite plays. The NBA video will be live soon. We appreciate you guys for showing tons and tons of love and support. We'll see you guys back in tomorrow morning. Same time, same place. See you guys then. Peace out.